when I was 21. I looked at my table and I thought my life was full of activities and full of stuff, but my heart was empty. Last year, Marie Kondo blew up the internet when she came out with her Netflix show about tidying up your life and decluttering your home. Well, we at LSA, we loved that show, not only because we do our best to try to keep a clean office, but also because Marie Kondo teaches a profound life lesson about clutter. She says that clutter is anything that doesn't spark joy. So really, clutter can be like a cluttered home, it can be a cluttered schedule, or maybe even a cluttered mind. So what I wanted to do today was to share a story about what clutter looked like in my life growing up. So let's start with this table. This table represents my life and what I filled it with, so we'll call it Jake the Table. When I was young, I thought that the number one thing that would bring me joy and add value was stuff. Specifically, toys. I obsessed over getting as many toys as I possibly could. And for me, that also meant video games. When I was five, they came out with the Nintendo 64. So I made it my mission to get as many N64 games as I could and play them to no end. The computer also became really popular when I was younger. Every home had a PC and I loved spending countless hours on the computer. I don't know, playing like RuneScape or pff, can't even remember. But it's funny, I had all this stuff and I thought it was so important to me, but I would lose it, break it, throw it away. I never really respected it. On top of that, I was so focused on stuff, I always needed the newest, next, best thing. It was never enough. And so when I was 11 years old, my family moved from a big house into a trailer. And at that time, I had to get rid of half of my stuff. Now, getting rid of some toys might not seem like a big deal, but to me, that stuff was my joy. And I felt like I was less happy and less valuable with less stuff. At that point in my life, I decided I don't want my happiness and value to be based on stuff. So maybe I should try something else. So as I went into middle school, I decided that my value and my joy was going to be on the things that I did. So I focused on doing as many activities as I could. I went out for wrestling, for track. I joined the football team. I played basketball, baseball, soccer. I did every sport I could. But the funny thing is I was bad at every single one. I only did them just to say that I was part of the team. None of it brought me joy. So then I decided, you know, maybe if I prove to people that I'm really smart, then I'll be valuable. So I obsessed over learning just a bunch of useless information, memorizing it just to prove to people that I was smart. I read book after book, not because I liked reading them, but only to tell people that I read those books. And I did that because I wanted people to call me smart and I wanted to get good grades. When when that happened, I felt a little happy, but I was unhappy when I failed classes or when I stayed up all night studying, getting stressed. So that wasn't enough. So when I got into high school, I decided, you know, maybe I should make my focus about people and being social. I turned my attention to meeting as many people as I could so I could be Mr. Popular, you know, win all the popularity contests. I wanted to be the center of attention. So I joined drama and I went into acting, you know, if I would have each man, so I could be on the stage, crack jokes. I also made it a goal to get a girlfriend. I thought if I could prove that somebody liked me, then maybe it would validate me. Now all these things were great. High school was a good time for me. But when I got into college, I found out that nobody really cares about what you did when you were 17 years old. So all of those social pursuits were fun and all, but they were temporary. Now in college, I ran into another issue. I had all of these different commitments, all these things that I was doing, but one thing got in the way of it all. Sleep. I had a bad problem with managing my sleep. You see, I, I would be obsessed and focused on doing all these things that I wouldn't sleep during the week. I would fall asleep in class, I would sleep through my work, I would fall asleep while hanging out with friends. So it was getting in the way of everything else that I was doing. So when I was 21, I looked at my table. And I thought my life was full of activities and full of stuff, but my heart was empty. I was doing all of these things only to prove something to people. None of it actually really brought me joy. So I had to take a look at my life. And I took the Marie Kondo approach. And I said, out of everything here, what sparks joy? 
At the time, I was working for a research group at Arizona State, and we were doing leadership coaching for high schoolers, college kids, and professionals. And in doing that, I found out that I really liked helping people. Specifically, I really liked writing things. I liked presenting. I liked teaching. And on my table here, the only thing that could help me get better at those skills was my laptop. But you can see, it's like buried under a bunch of stuff. It wasn't prioritized. So I decided that if I really wanted to get better at helping people, I needed to make space in my life for it. So I started clearing off my table, getting rid of some of my commitments, making time and space for work. I learned how to respect my work, how to make it a priority, make sure I was getting there on time, make sure that I was doing everything I could to improve my skills. And it was going really well. I started to feel more joy in my life but I still had a little issue. It was sleep. Even though I made time and space for work, I found out that I was still tired all day. I was falling asleep at work. So in order to focus more on work, I needed to find space for sleep in my life. So I had to look at my table and start clearing off more things. Make space for sleep. That helped me a ton. Then I got it in my mind, you know what? If I just focus on work and sleep, I'll be super effective. I cleared everything off my table. And I thought that this was going to be the way to get really good at work. But I found out I was wrong. I was still stressed and I was overworked. Boring life of just working and sleeping. I realized that I actually needed some of my hobbies. If I completely cut out things like playing video games and socializing, then I was overstressed and overworked. I found out that it was possible to balance my life, to make room for work, good habits, and my hobbies. I just had to make it so my hobbies weren't getting in the way of work or keeping me from doing what really sparked joy. And as I did that, I realized another thing. In order to get good at work, and in order to be get better at helping people, I actually had to spend time with people. So these hobbies that I once thought were just there, appendages, I started to see as opportunities to spend time with people. I played video games with my friends as quality time with them. I started reading books with my friends and I read books that helped me get better at work or understand what I was trying to do. At the time, I really wanted to get married and find someone to be with. So I started focusing on dating and spending time with people. So this is what my life looks like today. Everything has a spot on the table. I don't obsess over any one thing. In fact, I've learned to cherish every single thing because each item on this table helps me to focus on doing better at really what sparks joy. Now, I have a fulfilling work. I have healthy lifestyle and habits. I get to spend time with friends, I get to enjoy reading, which helps me get better at work, and I married the girl of my dreams. So how does this relate to Marie Kondo? One of the first things that she teaches is that in order to get rid of clutter in your life, you have to learn to respect things. I realized that my teaching and coaching and writing, that was my value. It's what helped me to connect with people and give back to others. As I started to respect it and nurture those skills, it brought more order to my life and got rid of a lot of the clutter. I was able to focus on developing the skills I wanted. I was, I was able to create the lifestyle that helped me get better at that. I was able to balance my hobbies and spend time with people that helped me develop a meaningful connection with them. Decluttering your life starts with respect. So find one thing in your life that really brings you joy and find out all the ways that you can invest time and energy and focus and respect into that one thing. And you'll find that as you give that joy the respect it deserves, you'll find more self-respect, you'll find more confidence, and the clutter in your life will naturally go away. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.